Hello, my name is Ezra Duke, and this is my final video update on my tasks, duties, and participation in the summer OREU program. Specifically, Ascend Zeolite Team Thermal Energy Storage Numerical Modeling Research. The selected Ascend Research Project, standing for Aviation Class Synergistically Cooled Electric Motors with Integrated Drives, was received by the U.S. Department of Energy, ARPAE, the Advanced Research Project Agency. The United States government wants to remain on the forefront of emerging technologies, including those which require energy efficiency and thermal management systems, as well as a claim to seek energy alternatives less harmful to the environment. The funding opportunity announcement from RPE for Ascend was especially interested in research that would help lead engineers to conceptualize and heading towards the commonality of electric airplanes. Heating and cooling requirements of the transportation industries greatly reduce the efficiency of vehicles, as well as increase the emissions of greenhouse gases for the fuel-burning vehicles. Optimally storing and utilizing waste heat and low-grade thermal energy conserves energy that would otherwise be costly and harmful to the environment. Our team specifically is conducting experiments with sorbent materials and variable sorbent techniques in thermal energy storage systems to optimize and determine parameters for thermal energy storage efficiency. Efficient thermal energy storage systems have the capacity to hold and release thermal energy for prime usage, decreasing the energy needs of the transportation vehicle regardless if it is fuel burning or electric. In the case of aviation, a thermal energy storage system on airplane engine designs could replace the traditional methods of fuel for propulsion and flight that airplane engines require, especially during moments of acceleration. I am on the zeolite sub-team, meaning that we are concentrating our experiments and research on the utilization of the sorbent zeolite materials. Sorbent materials are environmentally friendly, non-toxic, non-flammable, non-reactive, cost-effective, decarbonized materials that use recovered waste heat or low-grade thermal energy, like solar energy, and redirect or reuse the heat for further application in a system. Sorbent materials in absorption or desorption are excellent candidates for thermal energy storage because of their high energy storage density and low heat loss. On the top of the slide, I have provided an illustration labeled Figure 1 of sorption from an online source listed below. Absorption, labeled B in the figure, is ideal for energy and mass transfer, preferred in thermal energy storage systems. For the union of fluid molecules onto that, the solid that takes place is not a permanent uniting that is typical of absorption, seen in Figure 1A. It is more of a temporary adhesion. Adsorption is a surface phenomenon favorable to low temperatures, while absorption is considered a bulk phenomenon, not affected by temperature. Uh, next on the literature research, following mentor instruction, I read the doctoral thesis on sorption thermal energy storage for sustainable heating and cooling by Mina Rahani. The thesis details the undeniable need for increased integration of thermal energy storage systems more specifically by means of sorbent materials. Our thesis paper is similar in many ways to the research our team is conducting, including experimental data and numerical modeling, but with a broader application. Following, I read the scholarly article written by Naranyan and his associates, which I return to regularly for information. It as well explains the current consumption and majority of non-renewable pollutant means to which we provide our electric necessities and transportation. The article details the need for and potentially application of an absorption-based thermal battery in transportation climate control, as well as provides a useful collection of equations for thermodynamic analysis of heating and cooling. Below in Figure 2, Naranyan and Associates research provides us with a schematic of the discharging on the left and recharging on the right processes of a, an absorption-based thermal battery system. In discharging, the heat is released by the bed and absorbed by the evaporator. During recharge, the bed is supplied heat while the condenser dissipates heat. Other team members conducting in-lab experimentation have utilized variations of zeolite, testing for optimal performance results. According to research, the Rahani thesis, honeycomb structures reduce pressure drop and improve adsorption kinetics across the test bed. A quick overview of the experimentation being conducted was provided from Saurav Chakravarti, who is also conducting the experiments. Provided our images of his three experimental test setups. The test bed is supplied with a DC power supply connected to a voltmeter, K type thermocouples, and a computer to receive the sensor data. Variations of the honeycomb heights were tested to determine efficiency and optimal conditions. 
Each test bed has an aluminum base plate, while the other two test beds include honeycomb structures with variable heights. I have provided another schematic of, a, of an aluminum honeycomb structure on the top of this slide. The data received from the experiments conducted in lab are crucial to the research, as well as to my role, which is assisting in developing a numerical model. In order to generate a validated numerical model in MATLAB, data from both the lab and MATLAB simulations, the numerical model must be congruent. Now for what I've been specifically working on, numerical modeling. This is done in MATLAB utilizing coding that builds a simulation of the events of experimentation. I received a validated 2D cylindrical model that simulates melting of phase change materials from Dr. Schamberger, my PI, which I thoroughly familiarized myself with. The cylinders represent a 2D wedge sliver of an aluminum honeycomb structure. The numerical model consists of three MATLAB scripts. First, there is a cylindrical model, which contains all the functions of the system. These functions consist of MATLAB commands, heat transfer equations, nodal network, time steps, all the detail, and define the events of the simulation. Second script, system definition. This script in the model contains all the inputs, all the parameters, all the claim boundary and time conditions. This is where I begin most of my familiarization, changing the input parameters as geometry, heat flux, material selection, and the monitoring the resultant outputs. The third script, the wrapper, wraps up and runs the cylindrical model and system definition, as well as commands the specific results of the simulation, such as plots. The wrapper originally outputs with a heat flux plot, power plot, fraction of phase change material that is melted, plot, boundary plot, as well as temperature plot across the numerical model test bed. After understanding how the existing numerical model works, I react to the variable inputs such as different heights of cylinder, different geometries of the test bed, and different phase change materials, and began to modify the model to match the lab setup that is currently testing sorbent zeolite in 3D. First, I used the system definitions to define the exact geometry of the test beds used in the laboratory. We define the honeycomb wedge, or 2D cylinder, to match the dimensions of the honeycomb structures used in lab, as well as we started using variable heat fluxes similar to those used in lab. Next, I created a variable function in the cylindrical model that recorded temperature readings from the simulation at specific points in the nodal network. Finally, I wrote out a new plot that plots the temperature map or gradient of the opposite half of the test bed. Currently shown on the bottom are typical plots generated from the simulation of the numerical model. The phase change material selected is octadecane, and the high thermal conductivity material selected for the honeycomb slivers is aluminum 5052, as used in lab. These results show all the material has melted liquid, shown in the bottom left plot, labeled fraction liquid piece, uh, phase change material. The bottom left plots are the temperature gradient from the bottom up of the test bed. Rotating each 90 degrees counterclockwise would be the bottom of the test bed going up, which is where the heat flux is applied. To clarify, the yellow colored areas of the plots in the bottom left are the hottest material because they are high thermally conductive aluminum 5052. The top right two plots are the power and heat flux of the system with comparable points. These are crucial plots in determining the efficiency and the capability of the thermal energy storage system. Quick backtracking, one task given to me early in this program was monitoring the effects of changing the height of the thermal energy storage cylinder in the 2D numerical model. I had been running simulations from variable heights of the thermal energy storage, monitoring the different power, heat flux, and temperature gradient results. First row, row of results is for a thermal energy volume height of 0.01 inches. The second below row is for a height of 0.02, exactly twice the height. Noticeably significant differences in output results. The taller power and heat flux results showing less convergence and less phase change material melting, indicated by yellow of figure 12, as well as figure 13 smaller percent fraction liquid. What's next as of today? Further numerical model modifications to match the conditions experienced in the research lab experiments today. Uh, currently. This last week, I and I'm sure others will be working extensively to continue to modify the 2D cylindrical model, originally describing simulations for melting of PCMs, to a working numerical model of thermal energy storage for adsorption of sorbent materials, specifically zeolites such as NAY and SAPO-34, coatings as used in the lab. Additionally, to match the conditions of the experiment, the team will have to create the third dimension to effectively replicate the test environment. Finally, if those parameters, materials, and conditions are met, along with the completion of thorough experimental data, the team consider if the numerical model is producing results precisely congruent to the experimental data, validating the model. I regrettably so have not met all my goals set out originally 
to date in this program, but I'm excited to assist the team as they move forward with my last week. Thank you all. As we do, sign out.